So for assignment two, we've done this so much so far. We've done six videos. We ended with building a body onto the head, right? And so we've got at least our main components, but now we want to think about transitions. I have this body, for instance, but it's covering up some of the other stuff I want, like the mushroom texture. And I could just move the body underneath the mushroom, but then you can't see anything. So it's a lot about kind of making decisions about transitions. Like I could do something like that and transition them. And so today we're going to be learning how to use some tools like clone stamp to uh, fill in gaps. And you might find that you need some other textures to build between seams, especially at joints. Things like fur help, things like, um, I actually really like using the pine cones, but in the class we were talking about barnacles for underwater creatures, um, funguses. <laughs> there are a lot of creatures that actually have flora that grows on them. I think of like sloths that have like the green moss. So there's all kinds of different textures you can use to flesh out your creature. Yeah. So if you if you really get into creature design and concept design, you start thinking about it as what does this creature eat? What does this creature breathe? What environment do they live in? You know, what kind of things might we expect? And we'll be looking at that very closely with our proving ground when we put our creature into the environment. But for now, we're just trying to make a believable creature head to toe. So I've got a lot of cutting out to do, but first I want to work on these internal edges. And I think where I left off is I put this hedgehog back in and I did some colorations, but everything's turning kind of blah, kind of warm and sandy colored. And I want to get some of that, that mushroom like weirdness in there. So let me show you how I can approach that without having to cut out more than I need to cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mushroom up on top of my hedgehog. So there's the mushroom. Why is it not showing? Let's see. Oh, no, that's my sketch. Sorry. There's my mushroom. So I'm going to move that on top. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of it because I'll show you all the different ways we can start blending some of these textures that overlap together. And a lot of this is review. So I made a duplicate of that mushroom layer. I know it's small on the screen. We're doing new high depth projection, but I'll close both of those. Just have one open. And then I'll do our typical thing of using a very large, 100% opaque eraser that has a, a very soft edge, a hardness of zero. And then I'll just start brushing back with the eraser and letting the textures from underneath come through. And because I built it on my sketch in that anatomy, you can see the spine flows through nicely. Well, right now I'm just using a, an eraser tool with 100% opacity that's very soft. And I take out the really hard edge with that, right? So just the hard edge on this side of the mushroom. Next, once I've taken that hard edge out, I can go to lower opacities. So I'll go to about 50%. And then when I go over it, and I'm using a tablet, but you could use a mouse or a or a, uh, uh, what am I thinking, trackpad instead. Right. And you can start to kind of fade it out. And now you can see that the color of the mushroom is affecting the color of the fur. So if I turn it off, you'll see how the furs doesn't have that those red accents to it. 
You can even see a little bit of spots on the chest there, very subtle, but it, it will make this transition seem less odd when I get to it. So that's at 50% going on the belly. And now if I go to about 20%, then I can transition it even more slowly. And remember, if I want to erase more, I just go over it in that one area a little bit more. And I want some of these spikes to come out, like over the shoulders, but I don't want them to be the whole thing. And this is kind of the trickiest thing about creature design internal edges, because I'm going from fairly hard edge spikes to fairly smooth mushroom, right? And so you're going to have a lot of overlap of those areas. And it's really nice that that can come through with the belly, and then that helps the lighting match, because obviously that, that mushroom is lit very differently. than the rest of my reference. Okay, so that's just using the that's just using the eraser for internal edges. Now I can do the same thing with the hedgehog fur at the legs here. So I can use that soft transition for anything that looks a little weird like this really deep shadow in the hedgehog doesn't shouldn't really exist on my creature's leg but I can use a little bit of this fur running underneath to transition the neck yeah the hardness should be zero so you want a very soft edged eraser because these are internal edges So now notice, as I do that, these textures start to blend more believably, but the lighting doesn't always go with it. So my creature is nice and dark on the underbelly between the legs. I want to keep it that way, but it's not dark on the other side of the leg. So now we get to more specialized tools like that are called dodge and burn. And dodge and burn are fantastic because they're like doing a layer adjustment or direct adjustment for levels, but where you get to do it using your tool, like an eraser. So I have to choose which layer I want to darken specifically. And I'm gonna do it on this layer, which is underneath on the body, which has the belly. And so you'll find the dodge and burn tools, they are three underneath the eraser. It looks like a black lollipop. And if you open the drawer, you'll see it says dodge, burn, and sponge. Dodge, the black lollipop, will lighten things. So I'll show you where I can use this. You have tool settings at the top. This is my recommendation for dodge and burn. This would be the same for photo editing. Use them only with a soft-edged brush, much like the transition eraser. Use them only at exposures. Think of exposure as strength of 30 or less. So I'll usually use it around 20 and always use it first on midtones and try to do as much as you can on midtones without going to either shadows or highlights because just like levels if you brighten the highlights too much you'll just get to white and you'll lose pixel definition and if you darken your shadows too much you'll get to black and you'll lose pixel definition so the midtones is the safest range okay now i'm on the dodge tool which is the black lollipop it brightens. So I'm going to brighten the midtones at a strength of 22%. And where do I want to do that? I don't want to do that on the belly. I want to do it on the back. And I don't want to do it on the bristles of the hedgehog. Those are bright enough. I want to do it at the top of the mushroom. So I want to find my mushroom layer, affect that layer, and then start brushing it just like I would with the eraser with the dodge tool. And you can see it's brightening up that back. It's not brightening up the bottom. It's not brightening up the whole layer, like using direct adjustments would, just where I, I hit it. And you can hit it as many times as you need. Next is the burn tool, which looks like a little hand cupped into a circle. And both of those are based on darkroom 
augmentations you do for an enlarger going onto photo paper. And for that, I'm going to change the, use the same settings. An exposure of less than 20 or less than 30, I'm going to use 14. I'm going to do the midtones, and I'm going to use a brush that is 0% hardness and pretty large. And this will darken. So first, I'm going to darken the bottom of the mushroom. Because it was lit very differently than the other, the other resources. Now, as I darken it, what is happening? It's getting less bright, but it's also losing color intensity, right? And if I want to bring that color intensity back, though I might not necessarily want to, that's where the sponge tool comes in. So it's underneath the burn tool. The sponge tool is like your hue saturation direct tool. I'm going to use it the same way. I'm going to do a flow, which is its strength, at less than 30, but I'll do 29 so you can see it clearly. I'm going to make the hardness zero and the size of the brush big. Each of these tools is different, so the settings will, will retain whatever you choose for each of them. And then you have a little toggle here. Do you want this sponge to desaturate or do you want it to saturate? Well, if you want it to saturate, it brings back intensity of color. Boom. Like I just did to that mushroom. If you desaturate, it will take it more towards grayscale and take the color out even more without darkening or lightening. So that's what's cool about the sponge tool is you can play with the color without changing the lighting. Now there is no direct tool like this for changing the actual hue. You would still have to use selections and the hue saturation direct adjustment to change this into like a green mushroom in certain areas. Okay, but I think that mushroom looks pretty good. Now let's go to the belly. And what do I need to do to the belly to make it fit? I need to use the burn tool. And darken up those midtones. And I was using it, but I was on the wrong layer. So you gotta make sure you're on the right layer. And if it helps you to take the time to label each of your layers, you can certainly do that. Notice as I burn it, look how more of that mushroom pattern is coming through. So, it will the the first tool looks like a black lollipop and then if you hold down on that it will open up the drawer yeah so for dodge burn or sponge and then whatever one you're using that's that's the one it will stay on also those hedgehog spikes are pretty bright in most places so i can use the burn tool just to darken the midtones what's nice is it's not going to darken the shadows and if I want to take the highlight down a little bit on them, I can move it to highlights and just darken those a little bit, especially under the chin. So you have pretty, pretty direct and refined tools for lighting and color with the dodge burn and sponge tools. but you never want to burn shadows and you never want to dodge highlights because it's really easy to overuse these tools, right? So you can see the difference I made on that mushroom. That's with dodge and burn, dodged here, burned here. That's without, but it fits my character better. And then when I go in and I use my eraser again to blend it, all that lighting makes a little bit more sense. I'm also going to try on the mushroom. This seems like a good...